Okay, welcome to the third, I think, whichever part this is, of the Better PHP blog tutorial. Um, in this video we are going to code the functions for the posts backend file and possibly also for the comments backend file. Um, the first one we're going to do is this valid PID function. Um, so this is a fairly straightforward function, there's not much to it. Um, so yeah, let's quickly just do this. So what first thing we're going to do is type cast again, as usual, the post ID as an integer or to an integer. Um, this will prevent SQL injection. Um, I explained this before. Basically it drops any characters from the string that aren't numbers. Um, so then we need to, to do a sort of check query, um, which I'm just going to give the variable total. Um, and the query we're going to do here is a simple select query. I believe I made that same typing error before. Uh, right. Um, we're going to select count post ID from posts where post ID equals the post ID. Um, basically this count function, I think I've explained this before, um, I might have a um, tutorial on MySQL functions, so go and watch that if it exists. <laughs> um, basically it, it counts the number of rows in the result and just returns that as a single cell. Fairly straightforward. Um, so uh, the way we do, what we're checking here is we're counting the number of rows, um, we're counting the post ID where the post ID is the one we give it, so it's only ever going to return 1 or 0 because the post ID was set to a primary index which have to, which have to be unique. So yeah, it can only ever be 1 or 0. Um, so basically what we need to do next is fetch this result because um, at the minute this is just a query result. We haven't actually got the data from the table yet, from the result yet. So we're just going to do that by defining to total equal to mysql result um, function returns a single cell um, it only well I think it only works on columns that on mm, queries that return one column I've never tried it on more to be honest so um, the first parameter it takes as with most mysql sort of fetch query uh, fetch function functions uh, the first parameter is usually the query result, like so, and the second one is the row number, which we're just going to give zero. Um, so the next thing we want to do once we have this um, result is compare it against one. Um, we're going to check first, as usual, the error condition, so we're going to check if total is, total is not equal to one, do something else, do something else. Uh, what we're going to do if it's not one is return false because that means that it's an invalid post ID. Um, if it is equal to one, we're going to return true, meaning it is valid. So that is pretty much it for that function. Um, we can't test it at the moment because there's no data in the table. So we're going to have to actually test this all in one go at the end. So good luck there. Okay, the next function is infinitely more complicated, the get posts function. Um, doesn't take any parameters. Um, the SQL it uses is hugely more complicated, so I'm going to define this SQL variable. I'm going to set that equal to an empty string for the moment. Just tab that across like that, see why in a minute. Um, because what we are going to do is some query here, and then we're going to fetch that query result. Yep. Uh, equals MySQL query SQL oh god SQL uh, okay so the query we're going to use is a select query but if you remember in the um, MySQL video I talked about how it's sort of nice to lay it out not all in one line like we used for this function um, so yeah we're going to do that here so we're just going to select some things. Um, what we're going to select is the... Actually, we'll do the rest first. Uh, we're going to select some things from the posts table. 
uh, and those things are going to be posts dot post ID as ID. The reason I'm giving these an alias ID is because when we return this data, we want to always return the same sort of format of data if you if you like. So the array we return always needs to have the same keys. So I'm giving these an alias so that um, if like in the future I want to change this to blog post ID, the column name in the database, all I have to do is change this single value here without having to go through all the code replacing array keys and stuff. So that's why I'm giving them aliases. And also it's just a bit nicer to work with because the get post function we know it returns information about the post so we don't need to specify that this ID is for that post. Okay. Um, the reason we did it in the database is so that when we um, link the tables um, it's easier to identify which table um, the post ID we're using. Anyway, um, next thing is posts again. Uh, post title as title title twice. Uh, next thing is the left function of um, posts dot post body. Um, and then 512. Uh, this left function, left MySQL function, is similar to PHP's substring or substr. Uh, it basically, the way I've used it here, it will return the first 512 characters of this column. Um, you could select it all and then shorten it with PHP, but it's more efficient to do it with MySQL because then there's less traffic between PHP on your web server and the MySQL server. Um, we do need to give this an alias, otherwise the array key would be this, which is fairly horrible. So we're just going to call it preview, uh, as preview, like so. Uh, the next thing we want is the posts table again, um, and then the post user, as user. Um, next thing is the date, and we're going to format it using the MySQL date format function format which is fairly comparable to uh, PHP's date function in fact I think most of the sort of character identifiers are fairly the same so uh, first parameter as with most MySQL functions is the column which is going to be posts dot post date um, then it takes a string which is the uh, sort of format of the date you want it to output. Um, these are identified by percentage signs, unlike PHP, which was just letters. So in PHP we had D slash M slash Y. In MySQL we have percent D slash percent M slash percent Y. Um, the, luckily these ones are the same. There are some differences and there are some that are missing from MySQL as well. So um, there's a website, uh, the MySQL manual has a big list of all the characters. Uh, if you Google date format MySQL, it will come up and you can look at it there. Um, so I'll type, right, so H for hours, I for minutes, and S for seconds. So this is, like I said before, this is the, all, the format I pretty much always use. I'm just going to give that the alias of date. Um, there's one more thing. Uh, well, two more things, but I'm just going to fill this one in first, um, the, which is comments dot total total comments. Yep. As you know, I will add this second final parameter now. Uh, basically, it's another date. It's the date of the most recent comment. So, yeah, let's just add that. Date format again similar syntax, although we're using the comments table now. Uh, comments dot last comment comment yep, that looks good to me. Comments, total comments, yep, good. Um, I'm just going to give that the same format, so I'm just going to quickly go here, just copy this, and paste it there, and then give that the alias of last comment. Um, you may have noticed that the table for comments didn't have a last comment 
column. Uh, the reason for that that we've uh, specified that should be a dot there, not a comma. The reason that we've specified this last comment table is that we are going to define a query as the comments table, um, and we're going to join that fake table onto um, this table that we're selecting from. Um, I mentioned this method in the further MySQL queries tutorial in the basic section, so I've probably got more time to explain it there. So what I'm going to do is, well, go and watch that, <laughs> basically, and I am just going to sort of show you the syntax here. So we've got that information, and we want to select it from posts, left join, I also explained joins, from a query, which is indicated by these brackets, as the comments table. For some reason I've stopped typing, and my counter has stopped going. What's happened? This is a disaster. Oh dear. Okay, that was terrible. Very weird indeed. In fact, what? Okay. Well, my computer basically just crashed for some reason. So, because I've recorded 11 minutes already and it's quite late, I'm just going to carry on. And apologies for that. I'm not actually sure what you'll see during that, but never mind. Anyway, we're going to left join this query as the comments table. Like so. Um, I'm going to bring this query down a line so we can give it a similar syntax to the one we've already got. Um, and we're just going to select. Yep, select um, a list of things, which is going to be the post ID, the uh, count, comment ID, comment ID, as total comments, and max function we haven't met yet, so I will briefly explain it. It uh, basically returns the maximum value for a column, so pretty much it. If a column had like 1 to 10, it would return 10, maximum value. It also works for dates, which is what we're going to use it for. Comment date as last comment. Okay, so that's it for this select part of the query. We're going to be selecting from the comments table. I've done that again. Um, and we are going to group by group by post ID. We need this group by so that um, well, so that the comments are grouped together by all of the posts. So, well, I could just run this. Well, I can't. I haven't got any data. Um, basically, we are grouping all of the posts together so that what we will get as a result is each post ID, the number of co uh, the counts comment ID for that post ID and the max comment date for that post ID. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, you can go back and watch my other video on this sort of syntax. Um, that might explain it a little bit better. Okay, so let's just quickly move on. What we are going to be joining this table on is posts dot post ID equals comments dot uh, post ID because that's what we had here and in the table um, and then we are just going to specify that we want to order by posts dot post date descending this will just make sure that the um, comment uh, the post is shown in the right order basically so, yep, that is pretty much it for the SQL. Um, hopefully that will work. I mean, it's insanely complicated. Well, I won't say insanely complicated. It's a very complicated query. Oh, actually, I've realized I'm running massively out of time. So, uh, maybe I will leave it here. No, I'll just, basi I'll just quickly define um, this loop. Basically, we want to loop over this query result and put all of the rows into an array, which we can then return. So I'm just going to quickly define the rows variable as an array. And that's it for this tutorial. Unfortunately, we didn't get quite to the end of where I wanted to. 
this is going to be a long one, isn't it? So, yeah, thanks for watching, and see you in the next part.